and recording. All right, all right, all right. Tyranny of Dragons. Excited for today. Excited for today. Let me look at my calendar. So, I don't think I actually need to do that much of an extended recap because you're about to. Never mind. You'll see. Um, but anyway, you find yourselves all in the city of El Terrell. You have traveled there over the last couple of days, and luckily, um, there hasn't been too much trouble on the road. As you arrived, you went to find uh, Master Leeson uh, to complete your job, and complete it you did. Um, Aoife, if you haven't already received uh, the reward, because you weren't here during that time, um, you were all paid for the quest. That's 150 additional gold, um, as promised. Uh, but yes, you find Master uh, uh, Master Leeson. Uh, he says, hey, great job. Also, my contact is here, Antar Froom. It's in your best interest to get on his good side. He's a very well-connected individual, which might end up helping you down the line. So it would be in your interest to become his friend. And become his friend you did. You met the great paladin Antar Froom of the Order of the Gauntlet, and uh, you guys got to debauchery. Uh, Antar being a, uh, shall we say, uh, I don't want to say eccentric, but enthusiastic man. Um, you guys got to drinking, arm wrestling, uh, horse racing, uh, weapon training, all kinds of very manly shenanigans. And, uh, and you had a great time uh, and uh, perhaps are a little bit more, shall we say, emotionally learned uh, or learning uh, individual. Maybe learned a thing or two about camaraderie and fellowship. Um, and with that, uh, you all went to bed, uh, and all have woken up with hangovers except for Terence and Aoife, who, uh, was very busy tending to the horses and the egg that you had procured. Uh, but Shroud, you you can't feel hangovers. I think you just have, like, a little warning on your sensors that's like, warning, that sucked, or something along those lines. Um, <laughs> yeah, but Star and Mama Jube definitely have, uh, that's not your real, I mean, your fake name. But uh, uh, Ciela, yeah. there it is. Uh, yep, but Ciela and Star, you two are probably definitely like uh, this next morning. Um, and that is where we pick up today as you oh. all shuffle down. Oh, Given my background, can I roll to see how hungover I am? Yeah, sure. And you know what? Star, do the same. Con saves, please. Actually, I'll get one from you as well, Shroud, for funds. See, see how bad the robots hurt. Oh, man, I got a one. Oh, fuck, Star, your head. <laughs> You're, like, this is the like worst day of your life. Yeah. You've been stabbed, beaten, lit on fire, and this is worse. <laughs> Maybe. I got 15 plus 4, 19. Uh, you <laughs> are your, let's just say you're your father's daughter. You wake up and you're like, <laughs> oh, I feel better. Uh, this is the way it was meant to be. Like, yeah, it's still, maybe you're hurting a little bit, but like, this is the way it's meant to be. This is how one should wake up. Um, and, uh, how about you, Shroud? How'd you do? I got a dirty 20. Yeah, you're like, nothing stops me, not even your petty <laughs> alcohols. Um, it was maybe your internal monologue, as we are not very external. Um, but all of you meet up the next morning, uh, as you are all within a pair of Black Antlers Tavern here in El Terrell. You all find your way down to the smoky, uh, tavern, uh, open space, uh, where you guys can all grab yourselves some breakfast, if you guys wish to. Um, oh, uh, just doing some quick housekeeping. Aoife, you will need to pay out eight silver pieces for your in-stay for the night. Um, I meant to ask, um, what? how do you convert gold to silver? Uh, gold is worth ten silver, and silver is worth ten copper. Okay. If you're on D&D Beyond, though, you can just, like, go into the inventory and into your money section, and it'll, you can just take out eight silver and we'll do all the conversions for you. It didn't oh, cool. when I tried. Okay. If you, you could just delete a gold and add 10 silver or, or just subtract it afterward. Yeah, it's I, all just I, a 10 to 10 conversion. I will try again. Let's see what happens. No yeah. worries. Uh, but in the meantime, as you all wake up this morning, anyone who would like to get themselves some, some breakfast uh, for the day um, and some water and such, um, here at the end, that's going to be five silver pieces for a very hearty meal. And if you want it, I'll even I'll even go into my Heroes Feast official D and D cookbook and tell you what you're reading. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's do that. How much? I'm sorry. How much was it? Was the extra for the food? Uh, the silver. food was five silver. Yes. The thirteen for both. Thirteen for both. Yeah. 
Cool, 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 cool. Okay, let's see what they're serving for Brecky. Uh, all right, then. Uh, this bar is kept by humans. So no cool elven nonsense. Uh, boy, come on. Uh, da, 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 da. This is not breakfast food at all. My God. Oh, okay. Here we go. These are nice. Um, you guys are treated to uh, a nice little breakfast. Um, oh, we might have something else too. Uh, oh, skillet, fine spice potatoes. You are served uh buttermilk biscuits, better known as yawning portal buttermilk biscuits. These aren't from the yawning portal tavern themselves, but nonetheless very tasty with a little jelly on top and also uh served with skillet fried spiced potatoes so basically uh buttermilk biscuits and hash a very carb heavy breakfast um but it's pretty good it's pretty nice there you be okay, yeah uh if there isn't any uh, conversation needing to be had here at breakfast. Maybe it's just a quiet, like one of those like post party, just like quiet eating and drinking water and like coming back Star to life. Basically, Stars basically had his face on the on the on the table and it's just like, oh. yeah, just like face sideways, just like shovel feeding. <laughs> um, yeah, you just have like a quiet breakfast. Uh, but perhaps knew that you were successful, and Thurfroom seems to think you guys are pretty cool. Um, at which point, um, actually, it's more of a more of a young man. Uh, a young man approaches your table wearing um, a gambeson and uh, on an amulet uh, that is holds that sort of gauntlet of Torm on it. Um, does approach your table, um, and he is going to say to you guys. Um, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, uh, uh, Anthor would wish to speak to you in private uh, for for uh, for a meeting this morning, if that's quite all right. Uh, yeah, is he still up? Oh no, but he he's no he 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 went to sleep last night. But uh, but he is uh he likes to party in the night. But he's uh he works in the day. That's a, that's why he that's what he explains his hairstyle. He says like you know business. He's a little bald in the front, so he says business in the front. And his hair is really long in the back, so he says, like, party. I think it's funny. <laughs> but I think that's just because he's balding, but don't tell him I said that, please. I, I, I see. Uh, yeah, yeah, we can we can meet with them. Everybody else? Okay with that? Yeah, as long as we keep the noise down. I'm not... I'm oh, not I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll be quieter. I'm sorry, I had to run AFK for a second, but I just missed what that was. Uh, you guys basically just went to breakfast, and uh, one of uh, Froom's squires has come to your table and has asked you to attend a private meeting. Okay. See y'all we'll agree uh, to that. All right. Um, yes, right this way, please. Um, and he'll take you up to Anthar's room. Uh, I'm just going to quickly pop you guys in there. Oh, this isn't going to work. Oh my god, what happened to my screen? Uh, okay, hang on a second. Something is very wrong, guys. What the fuck? Hang on. Uh, okay. <laughs> It's technology. It's Jesus best. Christ. Like um, e fuck. I don't want to, but I think I'm going to. I'm going to just restart my computer quick because I have no idea what the hell is going on. I'm sorry, oh, no. guys. Uh, my screen has done... I don't even know how to explain it. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. That is so frustrating. I hate that for him. Right? He's not had good luck with technology recently. Yep. 
I always try and give my computer a good restart before we do one of these sessions. Mm. I used to do that when I would read a lot, like for Warcraft. Be like, oh, I've got to shut everything down. I have such a love hate relationship with ketchup chips. Ketchup chips. <laughs> If they weren't so tangy, I wouldn't mind it as much, but they are strong. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the dill pickle chips. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just a matter of... forgot this part of our session happened. I was like, oh, that's right. We did like a whole thing where we drank and were ridiculous. Right. <laughs> In the in our in our Monday campaign, something similar happened, except we convinced somebody to get a tramp stamp. Yes. No, we didn't. Nice. That's not what happened. He was okay. passed out. We convinced <laughs> we convinced the tattoo artist, the tattoo That's the passed out guy with a listen. Was it, was, it, was it nil? Was it nil? Oh no, it was an NPC. It's an NPC oh. that we honestly should have kept. Like, I I feel like Ryan would have been really upset, but we. Fell in love with this NPC. You should have kept puke. <laughs> <laughs> we should have kept puke. Listen, actually, we've all we've all been become attached to another NPC now. So I'm actually kind of curious if we end up trying to convince uh, this one to come with us. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. Probably not. But and and the reason I don't is because if I unless I miss my mark about who she is, I know she's important. Yeah. I think getting her to leave Western would be exceeding. I think that I think there's probably a plot point for her that leads to something at the very, very end game with League of Miracles. I probably, could be probably. Wrong. Well, you need to turn up the flirt a little bit there. More library dates. I would love that. We're trying. Then I got pulled into a gambling den. Mm hmm. Yep. Good to know, the though. Crafty Good to know if Fen dies, Fen dies though. So protect that dog at all costs. I am glad to know he he gets death saves. That's what I was right. worried about. I was worried about he'd go down and I don't know why I, I, gave, I gave him death saves. You guys fought the mountain lion and you went to death saves. Oh, that's right. I didn't know if I'd got the heal off before he had gotten the save off. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, so did I. All right. Oh, that's right. Because also he could get lingering injuries. Remember when we learned that for the first time? <laughs> I'm still not okay with that man. He didn't give <laughs> that. Ben didn't give his consent. He looks way him. cooler now. Okay. He, yeah. He okay. Like, yes. Yes. You're not wrong. What does he have? A scar now? Yeah. Like he's, he's got a, scar he's got a sweet on scar eye. on his eye that gives it advantage to intimidation checks. Mm -hmm. Nice. See, he's not all bad. No, it turned out all right. But I'll tell you what—you've never seen a campaign turn against a DM so quick as when he's we like, were all like, what? I know, everyone was pretty mad. Whoever's the host, could they make me the host now, please? So I'm not entirely sure. Oh, I have to sign that, in. That's why. Try. No, no, no. Hang on. I got it. I just, I just need to sign in. Is all I got to do. That's yeah, we, we protested, protested pretty loud. Yeah. We were like, "What do you Thank mean?" You. Yeah, everyone was pretty pissed. <laughs> we were like, "Not fun." I was like, what? He deserves it. He went I have mixed opinions too about like mixing exhaustion with the lingering injuries, especially because when I was like on my third point of exhaustion, I'm like, this isn't as good as I thought. No, it's, it's not meant to be that. <laughs> it's just meant to save you a potential downtime, really. If you think about it, like at a certain point, lingering injuries are definitely the better bet because you might just get mm -hmm. a little scar, right? That's, um, the, the dice are in your favor. Exactly. Okay, everything's fixed. Thank you for your patience. That's super duper annoying. I was like, this session's gonna go perfectly. I've prepped for it, I'm ready, and then it didn't. So that's annoying. Um, all right then. Okay, I think I've got everything in the way it should be. Um, let's open that door. Ah, let's open that door and get all of you to your meeting. Oh, this is where I get to try and stuff you all in a the door. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Come on now. There we go. In you go. In you go. In you go. Those are too big. All right. Let me place y'all in there. Can you just put star prone on the floor? Oh. <laughs> it's just like leaning against the wall. Like just <laughs> laid against the wall. Sliding down the wall. Just slumped on the wall. Like. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
Okay, here we are, here we are, here we are. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, you're walking into the room, and, uh, you know, Froom Squire shows you into the private space off the tavern's common room and closes the door when he leaves. Waiting for you in the room is uh, the broad-shouldered paladin that you knew from last night. Um, uh, and the monk, Leosin. Um, there are also many pitchers of dark red wine around the room. The paladin's face wears a serious expression, unlike its usual, uh, usual open countenance. Uh, and with that said, there's also uh, a stranger in the room who we're going to get to in a second. Antharfrum speaks. My friends, we have important business to discuss. At this point, you know almost as much as, uh, as we do, and thanks to you, we know twice as much today as we did a ten day ago. Something rotten is afoot. We have no formal organization to oppose these rascals. Not yet, anyway. We're working on that, and we need people like you who know how and when to fight, and how and when to keep their heads down and observe. We can't promise you anything except long days filled with danger and stress. But what could be better than that, eh? <laughs> um, and, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Leosin will speak up and say, me and Ontha have been, uh, along with a handful of other concerned leaders and scholars around the Sword Coast, um, we're trying to form some sort of organized resistance against the Cult of the Dragon, but in the meantime, we need all of you and your help. Um, oh, how rude of me. Uh, please, allow me to introduce uh, a colleague of mine, uh, and he will gesture to the half-elf uh, sitting in the corner. Um, Sorry, if you'd like to introduce your character. Yeah, you'll see a um, a half-elf with silvery complexion and... Uh, silvery white hair, bright blue eyes, a little young-faced, and uh, sitting straight and poised, um, attentively listening. Uh, she wears fine robes, has a spell book at her waist, and a rapier at her back. Um, she'll introduce herself. Hello, I'm, uh, I'm Erevé, and I'm very pleased to be here. Nice to meet you all. Um, Leosin will turn to you, uh, and he'll say, uh, ooh, uh, and he'll say, uh, this is, uh, you've been walking before me for some time, uh, Erevir, I'm gonna, could you, could you pronounce your name for me, Erevir, yeah, you got it, mm -hmm. Erevir, okay, sweet, um, Erevir, Erevir, you have been working with me for some time, and your skill is not... Um, I think is at this point a uh, bit spent, perhaps here. Um, allow me to, of course, introduce uh, my newest allies and associates. Uh, this is the Dragon's Bane Adventuring Company. Lovely, thank you. Um, he looks at all of you and he says, uh, I don't mean to be presumptuous, but everyone is going to need all the help they can get. Um, for now, let us all just speak and hear of the dangers afoot and what we have to offer, and in the end you can all decide if this is all something you wish to be a part of. Uh, and Antar sort of like, says, what do you mean if it's something to be a part of? Of course it is. Let's get to the business. Uh, and he will, uh, say, well, go on, tell them. Alanthar will say, I think the first and most important thing to speak of is, of course, what the people we're trying to organize into uh, against the Cult of the Dragon. So allow me to be forthright with you. Uh, I am a member of an organization known as the Harpers. Um, I, we are a secretive group, um, but beyond the general rumor, uh, we're dedicated to the equality and justice of the land and to keeping the power out of the hands of those who do not deserve it. That is what the Harpers stand for. We're not particularly picky about who wishes to do so, but this is uh, the faction that I have held. Um, uh, we're loosely organized and agents are allowed wide freedom in their action, but this is our purpose and we are one such faction that wishes to join against the Cult of the Dragon. And of course, uh, Ontha, and Ontha says, and of course, there's the Order of the Gauntlet. Uh, we're not quite so, uh, 
we share the Harper's principles and our organizations work together, but we do so very differently. You see, the Order of the Gauntlet, we emphasize faith, vigilance, and the constant struggle against the threats of evil. All of, most of our members are clerics and paladins, but we certainly don't turn our nose up at those who share and welcome our ideals. Discipline is key, and our order is uh, distinctly more structured and hierarchical than, say, the Harpers here. Uh, our top concern is the cult of the dragon, and Erlanthar says, yes, indeed, uh, agreed. Uh, in the past, uh, from my studies, I recognize that the cult of the dragon was more active in the East and was focused on the creation of what is known as Draculiches. Um, however, as of recently, they have shifted into the Sword Coast region, and they have a new emphasis on living dragons and on Tiamat herself, the Queen of Dragons, uh, which is cause for great concern. More than that, they're on the move, and uh, and it's up to something big, and they're and. On that, we'll say, such as the Order of the Gauntlet and the Harper, and we've been bringing in a third faction. Perhaps some of you may have heard of the Emerald Enclave. We've brought them, we're trying to bring them in to try and thwart these cults' plans, but there's still much to be done. Um, uh, Erlanthar will say, Each and every one of you has proven your skill and your mettle and your uh, willingness to do good in the face of distress. So we would like to, both of us, offer you positions amongst our factions, if you are so inclined to. Um, we can offer, in these early stages, unfortunately, there won't be any pay for members, and there's no ranks to be granted, but you would be accepted into the factions, and we can offer you help and support of the other members who you run into. Antharfram says, you should know our factions we are very widespread, and though this is the steps now that will change in the future, perhaps, you see, we have resources, and we have members that spread all the way from Naskel and Candlekeep in the south, all the way to Neverwinter and Mirabar deep in the north. Uh, Erlanthar says, we provided you horses at, uh, we provided you horses at Green Nest to get here. That is just one of the many benefits you can expect from joining one of our two factions. So we offer this joining freely. You've all, in your own rights, all proven yourselves many times now. Uh, would any of you be interested? Or have any questions for what we have uh, said so far? There's a lot of information to drop in you all at all at once. Uh, yeah. Um, as far as joining your organizations outright, uh, might have to think it over but one, one thing that i've already thought over is well i i am happy to assist in any way in in stopping this this dragon cult from pillaging any more innocent towns hurting any more innocent people so yeah i think we'd like to help whether we join or not Anthar looks like, he's got a look of, like, quite pleased, but, like, almost, like, not surprised, like, yeah, my boy, basically. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like, you know, he just, he looks confident that you would and excited that you have, if that makes sense. Uh, said as much. Uh, Leosin gives you a nod and says, what about the, what about the rest of you? Um, we, we do have missions to give and you can decide if those missions are for you, and he almost sort of retracts from Anthar as the very suggestion that you wouldn't help. It seems ridiculous to Anthar. Um, uh, but he says it nonetheless, and he says, but uh, but indeed, is there any of you who wish to, before we get into that piece of the business, is there any of you who would have interest in joining such factions? Uh, and Ciela just kind of pulls her pin from under her side of her cape. And she says, I'm already affiliated with the Emerald Enclave. Oh, excellent. That's uh, that's good to hear. Please, then I'd be most honored to join you in service of the Harpers. Um, yes. Erevere? Er 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 Erevere, yeah. Okay, cool. I'm gonna you just told write... me to pick a complicated elven name. <laughs> I did, I, and, and you did a good job. Erevere. Okay, okay, cool. 
I got it. I, I suck at all names at first, okay? Um, but anyway, yes. Uh, he says, I'm happy to hear it, Erevir. Um, and of course, there's no pressure to anyone, but uh, you can always join up later, but uh, indeed. Um, and he just sort of smiles and nods at you, and he kind of goes into his pouch and starts sorting through some, and he goes, is, is there anyone else? Or is, uh, is this perhaps a decision best left for later for the rest of you? Or if at all? All right, very well. Um, yeah, like with yeah. everyone's silence, um, Erevir will kind of like lift her brows almost in like surprise because she's heard of, you know, who she was meeting today. Okay. Um, Leah Sin will approach you, Erevir, being the only person present joining up right here and now. Um, and he hands you uh, a pin. Um, let's see here. Um, he hands you uh, a pin of a silver harp of a silver harp nestled between uh, the horns of a crescent moon. Um, and he hands it to you. Um, and he says, "Well, welcome to the Harpers. We're glad to uh, have you, Erevir. Um Please take this. It is a symbol of your allegiance with our group." Um, some wear the symbol openly, others keep them concealed, as I have for the duration of this adventure for the most part. At which point you'd all now notice that below his um, uh, holy amulet choker, he is now wearing openly that very same uh, symbol on an amulet. Um, he says, but uh, sometimes o worn openly, sometimes tucked away. Um, Anthar says, unlike the Order of the Gauntlet, we wear our grasping... Our, our gauntlet grasping sword of the blade openly. The symbol of the Order of the Gauntlet is indeed a pendant and symbol of Torm. Uh, and he'll actually move his beard <laughs> to show that he is also wearing an amulet with the same symbol of the thing already on his uh, chest. But yes, um, uh, the right-handed gauntlet of Torm seems to be the symbol of the Order of the Gauntlet. Um, uh, but with that, uh, Erlanthar will sort of, like, shake your hand, uh, Erevir, and give you sort of, like, his monkly bow of respect, um, and sort of put a hand on your shoulder and smile at you kindly. Um, and uh, once again, say, welcome. Um, so you may count the Harpers amongst your allies, Erevir. Um, uh, he retracts. Um, uh, Leosin says, now, thanks to all of you, uh, we know that the cult is amassing their treasure, or has amassed a great deal of treasure, and is now shipping it north. Um, where exactly the treasure is going, and what the cult plans to do with that treasure, are the two questions that need answering. We would like it if you could all join the cult's caravan, and accompany it on the journey. You could get your... Uh, I think Althar will sort of take over. And to be clear, they're not bouncing off of each other. They're not, like, super well-coordinated and rehearsed. It's more Anthar and his excitement interrupting Leosin and, and Leosin kindly going quiet. Um, so, uh, Arlanthar will... Well, I just combined their two names. Uh, Froom will say, um, you could get yourselves hired as guards. Uh, if not by the cult's own uh, wagon masters, then by other merchants who are traveling in the same direction at the same time. It's quite common, some of you perhaps have been sales swords for merchants and may know that merchants from different companies commonly join together and form larger trains for a protection on the road. I have a contact in Baldur's Gate who would be perfectly happy to help set you up with such caravans. Most caravans usually take on three to five guards. Um, and we'll come together and join their forces for mutual protection. So I could have my contact meet you in Baldur's Gate and hopefully help you get hired on as guards with various merchants. Um, Leosin will say, now, there is something to consider, is the timing here. You see, from what you've told me of the cultists' camp and when they traveled, Mundolf's camp both indicate that the wagons were heading west to pick up on the coastway road, where they would turn north towards Burgos and then Baldur's Gate, a journey that's about, um, uh, I would say, about 550 miles. That would mean that the wagons would take about uh, 25 to 30 days to get to Baldur's Gate. It is quite the trip, depending on conditions. 
The wagons pulled out at least a day ahead of all of you since returning to the camp. Um, and you guys got here pretty quickly. You did spend a day recuperating your forces. You spent a day abandoned, uh, checking out the actual camp, returning to Green Nest, resting and traveling. Uh, unless you... Uh, I would say that if you were to leave... Um, somewhat promptly, perhaps by tomorrow morning, uh, you would have at least 10 to 15 days before the Colts' wagons actually arrive in Baldur's Gate. You could get there about 10 to 15 days ahead of them. Um, Ontar Froom says, The river Corinthar flows directly from Elturel to Baldur's Gate. I've already procured a sailing ship that is making the trip downstream uh, and should get there in about three days if, it, if you tie it up overnight for safety. But if you risk pushing it for the night, it would only take two days to get there and you can get there well ahead of time. Uh, I've arranged for the ship to leave at dawn tomorrow morning, giving you some time to prep tonight, and we would be willing to pay you all 50 gold pieces to cover travel expenses and so on and so forth. Ciela totally perks up at the, con the, the, the idea of going on a ship. <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> guys, 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 guys. Um, I run on, and Ontar says, well, that's the job. You get on the ship that we will have paid you for, you make your way down the river, you get to Baldur's Gate, you await for the caravan to arrive, and you get hired on with some of the caravans there, and then follow them along all the way to wherever they're going with the treasure and figure out what the hell they're doing with it all. And then just bring the, that information back? That's right. Report back. Uh, okay. Sounds clear to me. Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. Leosin says, and you're all interested in this idea? Oh, every single one of you? And Andor says, of course they are! What are you talking about? Uh, yeah, I, I, I am. Terrence is! much better mood thinking of the, uh, of the ships. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This one perked up. Star just raises a hand and goes like, I, yeah, look. I don't know what that means, but it sounded like a yes. <laughs> oh, and that was a nod. I saw a nod from the quiet one. I don't know who you are. How, how yeah. did you get in this meeting? And Leeson's like, no, 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 she's, she's, with, she's with them. He goes, ah, I see. Uh, what is your name? I am Unthar Froom. And he produces a massive gauntleted hand to shake yours with. Aoife... Picks up to her height because usually when she walks inside, she tries to, you know, yep. shrink. She'll pull herself up to her full seven some odd feet and shake his hand. That's my, you're a beautiful woman. <laughs> I hope you don't mind my saying so. Sorry, that was a little offbeat. I apologize. And Eve is now completely blushing. Uh, um, uh, uh, thank you. Actually, I had a question if you, uh, had a moment to to maybe answer by all means that's why we're here is it <laughs> and she's going to touch her very briefly touch her holy symbol mm -hmm. which also happens to be the symbol of the emerald enclave okay what is the hold up with the emerald enclave joining your commission there's no jo there's no hold up the emerald enclave is well we're beginning to organize, but they have given their interest into helping with this threat. But, uh, such as it is, we're communicating, getting things organized. But it takes time, you understand? This is a large land. I'll be helping you. Glad to hear it. And he says, well, fantastic. Um, and, uh, let's see here. Uh... With that, uh, um, with that, Anthar Froom goes over to a chest and starts counting gold. Um, Erlanthar will also say, and of course, I would not expect that all of you would do this free of charge. Um, and he produces a soft leather pouch from his pocket, and he pulls from it a magnificently cut large ruby worth more than a thousand gold pieces easily um and he says um if you 
As you have all accepted this mission, the next time I see you, and should you be successful, I'll happily pay you with this ruby. Sound fair? I'm happy with that. <laughs> You're a man of your word, so true. Uh, and to be f and just to be clear, I'd say like most of the party, uh, this is the largest gemstone you any of you have ever seen. To be clear, um, singular gem ever. Um, and he puts it back in the soft, and he produces in the soft pouch. And Antharfrum walks around the room with little bags of little pouches and he hands each of you a pouch of 50 gold pieces you may add that now um Leosin will look to you uh Erevir, uh and then to all of you well he'll look to you first Erevir, and he says and you of course are interested in this task you'd be willing um, more than willing I'm always happy to help you Leosin. um what do we know of the dragon cult so far well I have no doubt uh, these companions here would be able to tell you. And he looks to all of you and says, well, what, and as for all of you, um, I assure you my companion here is a very skilled crafter of magic and will be very helpful in a fight, um, among uh, many other skills at her disposal. Um, if you'd all be interested, I think you would all make a great team together. The more of us there are, the stronger we get. Absolutely. Ando says, couldn't have said it better myself. Pours himself a glass of wine. <laughs> but he's, it's, it's not even the afternoon. <laughs> was, what? So? Uh, he drinks. <laughs> um, with that, Dragon's Bane has six party members. Um, and uh, Leah Sid sort of gives you a nod and says, well, there it is. Uh, Erevir, I think it might be best for you to learn of the things that have happened so far best from those who were amongst the events first and foremost, the first first-hand heroes of this journey so far. I'm sure they could give you a, a far better accounting than I. Um, but just know, as we have been researching, the Dragon Cult is indeed on the move and requires stopping. So we'll handle the factions, you all handle where they're going with this loot and why. Sounds All good right, to me. Um, Ere, yeah, Ervir will turn to the party. What are the what are her new companions look like? Who is she? Hey. hey. <laughs> yep. All right, I'm gonna pick and choose. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna start with you, Terrence. All right. Uh, Terrence is uh, about about five ten. Very very young uh, human male, uh, wearing uh, chainmail armor. Uh, very dirty brown hair and uh, in a big uh, shield with a bundle of wheat emblazoned on, on the front of it and a mace at his hip. It says, oh, yeah. I'm Terrence uh, from from Greenest, cleric of Chantia. Pleasure to, pleasure to meet you. Pleasure is mine, I guarantee. <laughs> All right, next is going to be Shroud. Shroud, what do you look like? Like death. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, so Shroud is um, a seven-foot warforged, just for common knowledge, but they are, that is, uh, t to you, would appear to be a maybe a knight because they have um, like a cape on and like a cover over their head and like kind of like a mask on. So like you wouldn't really be able to see their face, like more just just their eyes. Um, so yes, they are Warforged, but for everyone else's sake, appear to be either a metal person or a knight, still unclear. Um, <clears throat> their entire body uh, is made of metal, uh, and they carry like a, a big shield, uh, a giant long sword. Uh, most of it is like covered in dry blood. And they will say nothing. Terrifying creature, if ever there was one. Um, okay, Ciela, you're up. Ciela is a um, five foot eight air genasi. Uh, you can't really tell what gender Ciela is because of the mask over her face. 
Uh, she has bright blue, bright blue crystals protruding from her skull and small ones on her face and her arms. Um, her bow is also uh, crystalline, uh, which is a result of just um, transferring from her skin onto the bow itself. And they just grow over time. Uh, she breaks them off every once in a while. And um, uh, she just nods her head and she's ready to go. <laughs> Fantastic. Ifa. You're muted. Aoife will actually stand up to her full height and walk up to you and extend her hand uh, and introduce herself. My name is Aoife, and I am chosen of Sylvanas. Uh, I, I can cook some, and I'm a pretty good healer. Uh, she'll extend her hand and, and give you a, a shake and meet your eyes, probably a couple of feet above her own head. Um, and she, as soon as you do that, she like shrinks. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh that's great. And um, have I heard of Sylvanas before? Make a religion check. Oh, <laughs> first roll of the campaign is a crit. Oh, nice, yeah. <laughs> nice. I'll I'll give you Chantia and Sylvanas for this sake, as you as you're great in both. Um, these are two nature druids. They are the most prominent of the nature druids, in fact, or I mean, gods, not druids. Um, uh, Sylvanas is the oak father. He represents the wilds of the forest, uh, the deep nature, um, a a paternal figure in nature, but nonetheless, uh, one not to be messed with necessarily. And Chantia is sort of the feminine side, as the Mother Earth, the uh, goddess of uh, agriculture, of growth, of, uh, I'm going to say renewal, but nature in a kinder sense, in a, in a nourishing and growing sense. Got it. Um, and what sort of um, presence would they have had in the Misty Forest? Um, I don't think they, they might have, um, generally in the Misty Forest, they worship the, the Seldarine, which is the Elven Pantheon. So they wouldn't have had a presence there, but that doesn't mean people wouldn't have come and gone druids and such who do worship such gods. I think you would have, I think you may have met an individual or two who worshiped Sylvanas, maybe less Chantia being one of like the fields and the farms and agriculture, but Sylvanas more of the deep forest. So yeah, you've probably uh, encountered Sylvanas's worship before in the Misty Forest, but it's not widely worshipped by your people. Okay. Um, yeah, so she'll take your hand and say, uh, Chosen, I'll, I'll be curious to learn more of that. And she just kind of bows and smiles and she says, um, Many clerics and druids who are uh, members of the Emerald Enclave who worship Sylvanas are referred to as Chosen. Understood. Um, I uh, look forward to traveling alongside you. Just checking something real quick. If you need the lore and what I just said, I can provide it. That is what I'm looking for, admittedly, because chosen means something else in, in wider sure. faith. So, sure. Uh, um, if you go to the Forgotten Realms, uh, I believe it is the wiki, which is where I pulled it from, um, where it says that the Emerald Enclave is an organization of druids and other nature worshippers based off of the uh, island, and that they're referred to as many names, including caretakers, nature's chosen, the circle, and the chosen of Sylvanas. Mm -hmm. It would be important to distinct uh, nature's chosen as opposed to chosen. Uh, and I'll give it to you uh, why, Erevir, um, a chosen of a god is usually demigod-like in power. It is a person who has very much been chosen as a champion of the god's faith and is gifted with immortality, power, uh, greater strength. Um, but uh, yeah, you assume she means... The faithful of Sylvanas itself. 
Okay, if I said that wrong, then can I retcon it? Because I was trying yes, to of course. lore. Thank you. Yeah, yeah of <laughs> course, of course. I appreciate the uh, the attention to lore. Thank you. Um, and what, uh, what's your race, if I can tell? Pardon me? Uh, your race? Your character's Furbolg. race? Furbolg. Furbolg. Oh. I apologize. I should have said uh, Arabir, could you turn your input up? You're just a little bit quiet. Thank you. Um, cool, 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 cool. Uh, and just to be clear about another piece of lore there, Aoife, um, the Emerald Enclave does indeed worship, uh, many of them do endured worship Sylvanas, but it's not necessarily a one-to-one. -one. Oh, I know. Um, yeah, okay, cool. Um, and last but not least, laying upon the floor <laughs> is a very unusual creature that you've probably never seen before. Oh, really? Okay, so... Okay, um, Star is gonna get up, and <laughs> he's gonna try to approach. Um, can I roll to see if he's gonna make it to her in one piece? You're, you're gonna make it. You have a headache. You're not like <laughs> comatose. Yeah. Okay. Well, he'll wobble over. He's um, uh, so Star is a tabaxi. He's a uh, four foot five. He's a black furred with blacker, darker stripes. Um. He'll say that basically, hey, I've joined this motley crew. Um, I guess motley crew. We're we're a mix of weird people. Uh, um, yeah, and um, I joined because well, I was looking for my sister and she was with them, and well, things happen. I'm not gonna speak about that, but um, I'm here now, and uh, I'm uh, I'm a rogue. I I I I kill things with daggers. <laughs> and he'll just fall over. Arvir's <laughs> mouth kind of drops open. Um, I didn't know you had a talking cat in the party. This is shocking. <laughs> um, I want you to make me a nature check, uh, Arvir, to see how many of the creatures in this crew that you've heard of. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 16. 16, um, you've never seen one, but you are indeed aware of Furbolgs, uh, due to your creature's heritage and relationship with the Fae, uh, you would have, you're aware of Furbolg, this is probably the first one you've seen, though. Um, I'm gonna say you have seen a Genasi before, but not one as unusual as this, where they have crystals growing out of their body and, and such. Um, you have never seen or heard of a Tabaxi before, so yeah, indeed, like, you have a cat, that's cool. Um, and lastly, you have no fucking clue what's going on with Shroud. Uh, you're at this close range, though. You can see that their eyes are not human, not human, uh, not as you know them to be. They just sort of have like a, a faint glow to them that is speaks of something beyond humanoid. But you're not sure what. So you're aware of the human and the Genasi. The others are like, oh, this is new. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. Um... Yeah, maybe she'll give a little anxious look at Leosin. Uh, all right, I'll be taking off with uh, the Dragon Spain Adventuring Guild. Thank you for the connection. <laughs> I assure you, you they're very capable. Uh, Undoubtedly. <laughs> it, it, it was yeah, weird yeah, for it, me it, too at first, but they're they're good people. <laughs> uh, shall I? <laughs> Maybe take a step are. closer to Terrence. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In fairness, yeah, yeah. Terrence is the most unique and the most common of the races of the uh of the group, I would say. All right. Uh with that, Elrod says, You shall be the fellowship of the ring, and then gets pushed off screen <laughs> by Anthar and goes, Very well. It's uh it's time. Now, before you do anything else. Let's get you all better equipped. Why don't we do that? Awesome. Perfect. Nice. All right. It's time for shopping. <laughs> um, and he's... Azad! He's going to take you all out of uh, a pair of Black Antlers Tavern into wider El And now we have um, a shopping model, like a shopping montage? Yeah, you guys are literally going to have a couple hours of shopping montage for sure. For yes. sure. Eva? I have no idea if this is going to work. But as we're passing, can she just 
put a hand on Star's shoulder and cast Lesser Restoration. I, I don't know if it'll work, but they seem like they're suffering, and so I thought I'd, you know... Sure! Uh, does maybe... Lesser Restoration affect poisons at all? I, I honestly, I don't know. I think it might. It affects status. Yeah, I think it does. It might actually not. Look up your spell. But, you know... Let me know if it affects poisons. She, she, I think it cures it the poison condition. Uh, I'm, I'm looking it up right poisoned. now. All right. If that's the case, yeah, you put your hand on Star. Yeah. You feel Aoife's hand sort of on you, and you have like a what kind of moment? <laughs> um, and with a silent and like a quiet prayer, Aoife says to Sylvanas, "You're like, what is your?" And you realize you're just like your joints aren't achy, your head isn't sore, and you just feel refreshed. Okay. Oh, um, thanks. Pat him twice and move on. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. All right, partner. Um, okay. Let me see. I got, there's very specific things he's going to buy you. <laughs> um, oh, but okay. it's all, it's all good stuff, though. Um, yeah, as long so as he's he, buying. he is buying. So, the first thing he'll do is he's going to take you all to uh, a armor, uh, an armor shop. And he says, "All right, let's get you all better equipped. Um, we're gonna go through each individual." Ciela, do you like light armor? Or do you like medium armor? Can't hear you. Light armor. You like light armor? He is going to buy you your own set of studded leather armor. You may add that to your inventory. Thank you. Um, Terence, preferred set of armor? Heavy. Heavy. What do you got now, chainmail? I got chainmail right now, yeah. He's going to buy you splint armor. Ooh. Plate's a little... A little, a little, <laughs> a little much. Not quite there yet. Not quite there yet. Um, but he will buy you splint. Shroud. I thought you know my answer to that. It's heavy armor. He will also buy you a set of splint mail. Or just splint armor, not splint mail, just splint. Uh, what about you, Aoife? We're going to have to get something specially tailored for you. <laughs> well, I can wear heavy armor, but I can't wear metal. Well. <laughs> he looks at the armor, who looks at him and shrugs, and he looks back at you and he goes, So... You prefer light armor or medium armor, then? Medium. All right. Do you have some furs? And he goes, yeah, I got a couple of furs in the back. He goes, throw some hide together. Uh, and he's going to get you hide armor. Uh, we will come back to uh, Erevir when she returns. Uh, Star, what is your light preference? Armor. Light armor. Light armor? He's going to buy you your own set of studded leather armor. Um, there will be slight things about each armor that are towards your preference, like Star, for example, your armor might be black leather, um, and, uh, yeah, Aoife's, maybe there's a preference to what kind of animal furrows are included there, um, uh, slight colorations in the metal, there'll be a couple of sets you guys can pick from, um, uh, Shroud, you're like, I want that one, and it's like the most rusty, like, like, fucked up looking one. Uh, and Terrence yours is maybe a little bit more gleaming, a little bit more holy looking. Um, fantastic. He says, all right, look at you all armored. You look like heroes. Not that you did before, but you just look like it now, too. Um, and he is going to say, all right, to the what? To the armory! Huzzah! And he's going to take you probably right across the street and take you into a weapon shop. And he's going to go, all right, take a look around. Let me know what you want, children. Uh, and you guys like look at this vast armory, uh, this vast weapon shop where there are long swords, broadswords, glaives, lances, uh, shields, fucking everything. Uh, really, oh no, we're gonna wait till she puts her headphones on. Uh, Erevir. Yeah. You are all in an armor shop, and Anthar Froon looks at you and says, "What is your armor of choice?" I'm only proficient in the light items. Uh, but another uh, armor for the half elf, and uh, the armorer will produce for you um, an elegant set of studded leather armor. Oh, uh, are we paying for this or? Nope, it's on the order of the gauntlet. Very cool. Looks like I might have chosen the wrong uh, 
the wrong word to <laughs> <laughs> maybe you did um and you'll uh you'll say no but it, it's on both factions but well, whatever uh and he'll take you all across the street and he'll take you to a weapons shop and he'll say yes yes take your pick take your pick and you guys can all go around and like like at a basically a renaissance fair where you go to like the weapon place and you're like oh look at the, ooh, over here and you can pick up some axes and some flails and some short swords and you guys can uh uh, we'll go around. So, Terence, are there any weapons on the weapon list that would be to your preference more than your mace, or do you like your mace? On the weapon list? Oh, shoot. Any weapon, Terence. Any any weapon. Uh, here, hold on. <laughs> no problem, no problem. I mean, here, the we'll, mace we'll come has back been to you doing well for me. All right. Yeah, well, we'll pop back to you then. Uh, give you a second to look it over. Uh, he looks around at all of you as you're all like trying out different weapons, testing out the weight, swinging them in the broad air, like you know what you're doing. Uh, and most of you do. In fact, all of you do. You're fucking adventurers. Um, uh, does anybody have any weapons they want? Uh, is there anything better than a longbow that's still a bow? Nope. Longbow is the best there is as far as bows go. He goes, um, you could also have saying? one of these babies, and he'll pull out a heavy crossbow. Like, yep, it <clears throat> looks real good. Um, yep. <laughs> if you can load it fast enough. What about a silver uh, short sword? Well, I'm happy to cover whatever weapon you want. If you want something silvered, you'll have to cover the silvering. That's fine. Well, there it is. Um, so if you drop 100 gold pieces, Ciela, you may be the proud owner of a silvered short sword. Sounds good. Uh, so what I will say to do for that, so that you know when it's on your sheet, add you a short... Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Perfect. I had a short sword um, already, so you can just silver it. Yep, just go to the customize and silver. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. If there's nothing else for you, he'll look over at you, Ifa, and he goes, what about you? Anything uh, look good around here? Well, I reckon there is, but I am... As far as weapons go, I am good with my sword. Or my spear. Oh, very well. Good, good to see, good to see, good to hear. Um, he'll look at you, Star, as you're probably in the dagger section, going like... <laughs> Swap some daggers around. He goes, and you, my very feline rogue. So anything that you have preference for? Short swords, perhaps a rapier? Um, I will stick to short swords, because um, they're easier to handle, and I can do a do wield. Fair um, enough. So, I see some short swords. I don't know if they're available. What can I have? <laughs> uh, you already have short swords, don't you? Yeah, but is there something more um, attacky, more powerful, I guess? I don't know. He would say, well, the rapier has, uh, it is wield, it is a dexterous based weapon. Uh, you can only wield it in one hand, though, unless you're some really skilled, crazy dual wielder. Uh, there is a feat that allows you to dual wield rapiers, but uh, I don't know if you have it. Probably not. So if I have short, short swords that won't go stronger, then I'll just stick to my short swords. Very well. <laughs> he goes, what about your bow? I see you only have a short bow. Can you wield long ones? Um, to my knowledge, I don't think I can wield long ones. Hang on. Do 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 weapons, crossbow, hand, long... Uh... So I can handle a crossbow, it says. Do I want one? <laughs> um, yeah, so you could, if you wanted to, wield a light crossbow or, or a long... Oh, long sword's interesting. Yeah, I don't know how, how I can have a long sword. I... Can you really not wield a longbow? I thought rogues could wield longbows. Huh. No, they don't. That's crazy, man. Um, he'll say, "All right, well, uh, how about this bad boy?" And he'll pick up a light crossbow. You're like, "Yep, huh?" That is a dex-based weapon, and it will do one uh, d eight as opposed to the one d six damage. Okay, I guess I'm gonna go with that because that'll be nice to have as a faraway weapon. There you are, and he hands it to you. Uh, so you may add um, a bolt case, 20 bolts, and a light crossbow to your inventory. 
right hang on um can we sell our old armor yeah yeah I was gonna if, ask anybody, if anybody wants to sell their old weapons or armor i'm not gonna go through well we'll, we'll go through in case anyone if you trust yourself to do it go right ahead uh sell them for half of their price Half of their gold value, you can get back if you want to sell your old armor. Okay. Same goes for weapons. If anyone wants to sell old weapons, uh, half price. All right, you got him, Star? Yep, I believe so. Bolt, bolt light mm -hmm. crossbow and crossbow case. Fantastic. Uh, he'll turn to you, uh, Erevir, and say, And you? Is there anything else that you might like around the shop? something ranged and of a lighter property uh preferably mm. favoring a dexterous individual light uh or well it doesn't have to be light but light finesse um and thrown ah uh, you want a light thrown weapon yeah. he says well there is no shortage of daggers that's to your preference and what about a i would like some darts Old old darts. Sure, yeah. Darts it is. Uh, you may add fucking ten darts to your, or as many darts as you want, up to ten. You'll even buy you like a bandolier or something like that. Oh, uh, could I have a uh one of those as well? And she'll uh, point to the light crossbow. Uh, she'll say, "Why not?" Go right ahead. I expected people want to want more things around here. Um, so you can go ahead and add a crossbow case, 20 bolts, and a light crossbow to your inventory. He goes, wait a second. I got to ask, aren't you a wizard? Just out of curiosity. <laughs> I am a wizard by trade, but turns out I'm quite good at many things. Well, far be it for me to tell a woman she can't do something. <laughs> You're a wise man. Hmm. <laughs> Not really, but I appreciate it. Um, and he'll, yep, you may add that to your inventory and you may purchase that. And he goes over to you, Shroud, and he's like, and you. Yes, my favorite of the bunch, I think. Dark and mysterious and full of piss and vinegar, no doubt. What do you want? This feels very much like the Wizard of Oz, doesn't it? <laughs> a little bit. I am not a cowardly lion, um, so... but you are indeed a tin man. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, so as far as weapons go, longsword is the best that I can wield, because I don't feel like switching. The other, other, I could have a mace like a, or a warhammer, and I don't... Look at you. You're so versatile. I see your indecision. Just get everything you want. Come on. You don't want a pike? What if no. you're standing behind a friend? You need to get them. Two, so could I get enchants here instead? Like a plus one shield or a plus one to my longsword? You can't get enchanted weapons Dang. and armor. No, sorry. Um, <laughs> That's a little more expensive than the like 10 gold pieces it is to buy a new oh, weapon. See, as opposed I, to the couple I hundred. I was curious my own if I paid for it. But okay. Um, Let's see here. I don't know. There's nothing that I, I want. What about ranged things? You got range? I have a short bow. You're so talkative when think people are buying things for you. I like it. <laughs> right. Um, this is my inner monologue. Excuse me. It's a soliloquy. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. And your inner <laughs> soliloquy. Exactly. Um, I don't know. I don't think there's anything else like that I would want or need. A minimalist. I know there really isn't that because I have the most efficient weapon and if I can't enchant like a shield or anything that there's nothing that would benefit me and I have a short a short bow so I'm good well can't say I didn't try just gives you like a on the <laughs> shoulder um he goes all right I think that's all of you everybody's got all their weapons and arms and armor now all uh, right I've oh, uh, yeah yeah I, I think I've picked picked out one i think it'd be perfect uh both 
both a weapon and a tool of cultivation. I'll grab a sickle. Hey, all right, sickle for you. Nice. Um, and he goes, all right, uh, all right, we're almost done here. Let's go, uh, does anybody here need adventuring gear of any kind? We could go pick up some adventuring yeah. gear. May as well. Yeah, that, yes, yes, all right. Huzzah! And he's going to take you down to, like, the general adventuring goods store, whatever that may be. Um, and you walk in, and he says, all right, let's go around, what do you want? Um, so... Terrence, is there anything that you would like from the adventuring gear list? So I keep starting with you, but I should maybe give you. <laughs> um, uh, does All anybody right. here know some of the stuff they might want? I do. Okay, we'll start with Ciela. I saw the hand first. Ciela, is there adventuring gear you please? Um, inkwell, quill, and paper. Go ahead and take it. He'll happily purchase those for you. He definitely has like two or like of his squires following him around with like a big chest of gold. <laughs> Nice. He's like, um, okay, who else? Uh, Star, I s heard from you. What is that you would like from the adventuring gear list? I would like a disguise kit, a poisoner's kit, and I don't know what carpenter's tools are. <laughs> uh, he will buy you the disguise kit and he'll buy you the carpenter's tools. And then you say poisoner's kit and he like looks at you like, what? <laughs> As you would be aware that that's illegal. <laughs> uh, well... Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Do you mean uh, it? Good one. <laughs> I'm watching you. Is there anything else? Uh, no, that is it. What do I use a carpenter's tool, though? What, what, what does it actually do? If you want to build a house. Here, I can tell you uh, some of the things that you can do with carpenter's tools. Give me half a moment here while I pull it up. Uh, if you ever want to know what you can do with artisan's tools, check out Xanathar's Guide to Everything. Uh, but for carpenter's tools, um, it comes with a saw, hammer, nails, hatchet, square, ruler, adds a plane, and a chisel. Um, you have all kinds of stuff. You could build a simple wooden structure. You can design a complex wooden structure. You can find weak points in a wooden wall. You can pry apart doors. Uh, you can fortify with work and raw materials, windows, and doors. You can create a temporary shelter. Um, all kinds of good stuff. So yeah, Xanathar's Guide to Everything. We should have access to it on D&D Beyond. Check it out. It's got all kinds of neat, neat things you can do with your different tools. Okay, because I had that as, as a proficiency, and I was kind of wondering, what the hell do I do with that? With so. All kinds of good stuff. All kinds of good stuff. Uh, who else? Can I please get a healer's kit? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Highly recommended. <laughs> oh, Terrence, one for you as well. Did we get healing uh, potions? Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> keep trying i appreciate the appreciate the the, the hustle but uh though it is on the adventuring gear list it is not as common as that what about holy water <laughs> oh yeah you can have holy oh yeah you can have holy water um it's the order of the gauntlet baby we've got all the holy water you can drink or throw oh, at vampires All right. Uh, what about... Was that everything for you, Shrap? Yes, I, I think cool. so. Yes. Yes. Cool, 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 cool. What about you, Terrence? Anything else? Uh, yeah. Uh, no, just the healer's kit and holy water. Fantastic. Aoife? Well, I'd like a healer's kit myself. It seems like... One for you! And uh, chef's tools, if you have any. Oh, I do like a woman that can cook. Uh, and you can definitely get cooking tools. Hope you don't mind my saying that. It's all right. <laughs> um, and uh, we'll come back to uh, Erevir. Oh, there she is. We'll get her in right, right now. Uh, Erevir, is there any adventuring gear that you like? You're muted. <laughs> I would like um ball bearings and ridiculous I love it when he gives them <laughs> glass bottle a couple of them sure uh, cow traps a climber's <laughs> kit um crowbar grappling hook 
Hammer? <laughs> He's not anything, you're right? <laughs> no, you're, you're good. He's going. <laughs> He's looking at you. It's definitely, like, you're good for anything, but it's definitely, like, Home Depot, where you're, like, buying, like, rope and duct tape, and they're, like... We're going what? on an adventure. I don't know what I'm going to need for 500 miles of travel. Are you kidding me? Well, you're perfectly right. I just... <laughs> it's, it's, anyway, it's, uh, that's very uh, infiltratory actually, kind of. Climbing right. gear might be something we should consider. That's a that's a real smart thing to think about. Right. Do a lot of climbing following a caravan around. Question above the table. Uh-huh. Um, if I were to get, like, say, an alchemy kit, could I work towards learning that later? You would need a teacher still. I need a teacher still? Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'll keep in mind, if any of you want to purchase, like, hire a tutor, they could follow you around and tutor you. Um, but anyway, yes, uh, Air, Air Revere. Uh Did you ask about that out loud, Ciela? No. No, I was about oh, the okay, table. Sorry, never mind then. Um... But all of you could be aware of this. Like, like, obviously, this is a mechanical thing, but all of you be aware, like, in order to learn something, you need a teacher, and there are teachers for hire out there. So what that would be just be. Oh, die, like, uh, I'm going to come to you and talk to you about it in a second. I just want to deal with Aravir first. Uh, Aravir, would you like to continue your list? Sorry, was there an open question though about everyone getting climbers gear? We're gonna we're gonna stick with Aravir for a oh, second, yeah. guys, and then we will come back to whoever else has questions. <laughs> All right. Um, we'll do um, ink and paper. And quill or like a pen or something or whatever. A mirror. Um, perfume and soap. Is that right. allowed? Is that here? Okay. Yeah, sure, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I think. Oh, you've got to have iron spikes for sure. And. Uh, and I'll take a vial. <laughs> you guys are like, I want some paper and ink, and I love like a healer's kid, and like a this, and then Aravir's like, doop, doop, doop. <laughs> <laughs> as it goes across the counter, and Aravir's got like, like, are, do you want a second backpack with that? So, ooh, a 10 foot pole. <laughs> um, does Star have proficiency in poison kit? Yes, I do, but I don't have one. Oh, wait, and alchemy supplies, too. Sorry. Oh, of course. We couldn't forget the alchemy supplies. Yes, that too, please. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yes, you can add all of that to your inventory. He will pay for it, and he's giving you, like... Actually, I don't, I don't know if even he knows how he feels. It's like, mm -hmm. just having flashbacks of my ex-wife for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> Is that all? Is there anything else? Oh, no, that'll do. Quite generous, thank you. Oh, okay, all right. Um, the, 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 the guy who's running the shop is like, he looks so happy. He's like, yes, thank you. Uh, and he puts that giant bag of gold <laughs> under the table. The shop's mostly cleaned out by now. He goes, is there anything else for anyone here? Yes, Aoife? If, if there's another climber's kit, I thought that was a real good suggestion. Yeah, climber's All right, climber's kit for you, climber's kit for you. Anything else? Ooh, uh, do you have an herbalism kit? That we do. Yes, go right ahead. All right. I, I don't know why I'm running the shop. I don't know why I'm saying it, but <laughs> were was were bags an option or no? Right, like it's just items to put in. This is an above the table question. I like. I don't really care. Like you should probably have multiple bags if it's like getting crazy but i don't care like really. a bag of holding no not like a bag of holding <laughs> yes ifa i am happy to pay for this myself but uh saddle bags like for a horse oh yeah go right ahead uh, yeah and he'll give you saddle bags oh well thank you that's one minute i'm fine thank you this is uh it's a good thing you're all such great adventurers. <laughs> oh boy, anything else? Uh, yeah, I, I might say that. I might say like 
some of you guys might want to purchase like saddlebags, maybe, and we'll say like some of the stock is like on your horse. <laughs> um, uh, absolutely, yeah. Okay. Um. All right. Now, last but certainly not least, let's get you all some new threats. Clothing shopping. Let's go. Huzzah! Uh, and he'll take you all to like an, a seamster. Um, and he's going to buy you all one new outfit <laughs> of your choice. That could be fine clothes, that could be a costume, that can be just common clothes, traveler's clothes, whatever you like. But as you all look down at your apparel, except perhaps uh, Erevir, um, you're, yeah, you're, your shit's a little tattered. And, <laughs> and, you know, you've been traveling on the road and you've been through sieges and uh, maybe a little blood soaked and... Uh, um, yeah, so he will purchase you all one outfit. You may go ahead and choose whatever that outfit may be. Get something that blends in with the cult. I might actually recommend that. That is a secondary reason why I am taking you all here. That's... I doubt they're going to recognize you all, considering, you know, there's a variety of people and such, but... I suggest you do indeed change your appearance as much as uh, you can in simple ways to reduce the odds of everyone that you meet, knowing you're recognizing you from when you were at the camp. So, that is why I am offering to purchase you new armor and new threads, and I'm purchasing weapons and gear for you because, well, you need it. Okay. So I don't recommend replacing your outfits, I recommend getting new ones, you understand. Well, Ciela would get something basic, probably all black, um, or blue and black. Something just like a simple shirt and pants to go under the armor. Okay, you, I would call that uh, common clothes, probably? Just common clothes, yeah. You know that? Buy some, or, uh, you're not paying for it, he's paying for it. Uh, yeah, let's go, let's hear about your appearances. Um, who else? Who else has got an appearance change for me? You've all got new armor? What does your clothes look like? I don't think it would be an appearance change, but I think Shroud would definitely get like a new, like hooded cloak situation going on, and like one that could like kind of cover like the front of their face, and maybe it like drapes across their chest, like just to kind of keep like the cover of their body like relatively inconspicuous because they don't really have a point to be wearing clothing per se, but enough to like mask like the metallicness of like their body frame structure. So like a hooded cloak. Yeah, cloak is a good idea. Yeah. And he will, and like, Anda will insist on like putting some embellishment on, even just some minor ones, just like some trim or, or at least change the color of the cloak so it's not black anymore. Um, and he'll get you a new cloak. It should be uh, red that... so everything blends in. Yeah. <laughs> um, red on top, brown, just near around the bottom edges. Uh, perfect. I would also like a cloak. So sure, you can get a cloak. Yeah. Add a cloak to your inventory, because I believe that is a item oh no it's not huh only anyway. certain magic items that happen to be cloaks can be cloaks exactly um so yeah you can just say yeah you can you can take down a cloak uh who else yeah i'll get uh probably also a cloak and then some uh matching probably dark uh if not black then like a dark red uh vestments or vestments. Nice. Uh, yeah, and you get very fine vestments. On Room would know exactly where to go to get, like, proper religious garbed vestments. Absolutely. Um, Aoife? Uh, I think that Aoife is going to go with uh, almost like a monk's sort of appearance. Uh, loose right. fitting pants that are maybe tighter around the, the calves so they don't get in the way as she moves around. Um, something that, that is, is easy to move in, like a little bit loose but form fitting so it's not going to catch on stuff in the colors of the, the, colors of the cult. Mm -hmm. uh, and a, a cloak. Um, and if possible, some, some, good, some good boots. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you get all that all that good stuff. Uh, Star, what does your appearance change look like? Uh, I I know he's already technically wearing a cloak, but he probably wants to get a cloak that matches 
So again, probably a nice maroon red cloak. Um, and uh, uh, probably just a new set of boots again as well. Um, but yeah, mostly he just wants to keep it black underneath and and just like a wet a red hoodie because he gets a lot of blood on his face for some odd reason. I don't know why. Good. Fantastic. Um, he will offer, he says, to you, Erevir, he says, now you have not been to Green Estor the camp, so they're certainly not going to recognize you, but I offer the new set of clothes all, all the same. Your silence spell is on. Are they back? Is she back? Because did she have to go feed her dog? I did, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um... Yes, I'd love perhaps a bit of a headscarf and um, some durable traveling clothes. Very well. Uh, you may add traveler's clothes to your inventory. As it is an actual thing. Clothes travelers. Okay, there we go. Look at you all. You're all just junk. Look at you. You're all the vision of adventure. That's what you all are. Good job. All right. Those are my pockets cleaned out. So, well done. You all look great. Ready for travel. Remember, be at the docks tomorrow morning. The name of the ship is... Wait for it. The Voyager. Make sure to find the Voyager. It is captained by Captain uh, Lelani. Would I know him? Her... Make a, his, make a history make a history check. Oh nope, don't know her. <laughs> That'd be get? three. <laughs> yeah, you you haven't heard of this particular cat. Okay. Um says yes, look for or else yeah, for the three, yeah, you don't know. I wanna I wanna give you stuff, but um yeah. Captain uh, uh Captain Lilani of the Voyager. That is your ship. Now when you get to Boulder's Gate. You're going to want to look for my contact. He is in the Black Gate District. He is a human trader by the name of uh, Akin Celebon. That is spelt A C K Y N S E L E B O N. I will post it in. Uh, I'll give you a letter in the Zoom chat. Um. So that is the name of his contact. He says, a human trader in the Blackgate district. That is the outer northern part of the city. Um, he sells materials needed for long distance freight hauling, uh, wagons, ropes, netting, and such. Uh, good contact to have, and he should be able to help you get hired on as mercenaries for the caravan. So anything else you need, anything else you require before setting off tomorrow? Off the record, would you I'm have a to anywhere where I may be able to find things that I may not get at these shops? On my own I'd... coin, of course. He like looks. Uh, I would say that you guys are in like the trader district, so you guys are like the middle of an open market. Oh, he goes okay. around. I would say. All right. Have to look around. Good place. Okay. All right. Anything, anyone else? Any of any other questions or concerns or thoughts or clarifications required? Last chance. Um, Star is going to see about mailing out his letter that he meant to send out the night before and just uh, send it off to around with another carrier nearby the city. And, All right. Uh, and yeah, Mike definitely. Even, yeah, you will be able to find what you're looking for around the city and you get to hand that off, no problem. All right, all right. He says, well, it has been a pleasure getting to know Dragon's Bane, and should your missions be successful, I have no doubt, we will cross paths again. May Torm be with you. May your heroics be recognized by the gods. May this cult of the dragon find their way to the nine hells where they belong. Thank you for all you've done for us. You're welcome, Ciela. You're welcome. Good luck. We're counting on all of you. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. And he will mount his horse, give you all a look, a nod, a stern one, and he'll 
and he'll ride his horse down the lane with his squires running afterwards with an empty chest. Okay, so Ciel is just going to immediately turn to Star. She's going to say, "We got to find you a poison kit, and we got to get you some vials, and we got to use that snake poison we got." What did you just say? Did, did um, you know it's illegal? Uh, well, we're not going to be using it against people in the town. Well, you shouldn't be using it at all if it's illegal. Well, I know some contacts around here, I think. Let, well, see let's see if you can just get some vials then. Yeah, vial. Yeah, let me um Yeah, let me just contact my contacts. I, I have a few people I know. Um wait, do I actually know people around here? <laughs> <laughs> You've uh, yeah. You 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 have an idea of who to talk to. Okay. Given your background. Yeah. Um do they have the vials that I need? Well, Siala and the Star disappear into the city to go find vials, but not really. <laughs> um, so if you guys go looking, Star given again your background contacts. Um uh I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back to you two. Actually, okay. I wanna, I wanna resolve what everybody else is doing because if you're gonna be there, Ciela, you might learn a thing or two about your companion. Um, <laughs> all right, but for the rest of you, what would you like to do? I guess we could do anything, huh? We got all day. Oh yeah, you guys. This would have only taken like till about midday, so you guys have the rest of the day to prep and get ready before you're. Uh, voyage tomorrow. Okay. Someone had asked about healing potions. I, I think I might could be able to make one. I went and got work on it right now. I didn't much, but... Every, every little bit will help, I suppose. Well, I'll uh, go on and do that then. I'll head off to start brewing. Yep, you make your way back to uh oh, I hate the name of this tavern, God. Um, black Antlers. Black Antler Antler. A black pair of Black Antlers, antlers Tavern. A pair of Antlers. Black Antlers. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It is. Um you make your way back to that tavern and uh I will say you have enough time to to do that. If you mark off twenty five gold pieces as you go around town producing uh the necessary herbalism of raw materials. You can uh, spend the day working on that and create one potion of healing. That'll be Aoife. Uh, what about Terran Shroud or Erevir? Yeah. Here, what can can I see about getting my mace silvered? Absolutely. Abs absolutely. If you're willing to put down 100 gold pieces, uh, you can recollect your mace at the end of the day silvered. Yeah, let's do that. That sounds cool. I'll pay a hundred gold pieces for that. A while back, we got a bag of six gems. So should we at some point get money for them? Uh, Over the table talk. Uh, what, the table what kind talk, of gems are they? We cannot get rid of diamonds. <laughs> Not that we got diamonds. If any of them are where, diamonds, we got to keep them. Where did you? Where did you produce? Where did you find these gems, Ciela? We got them. Um, where was it? I think it was a reward for helping with the with um, the initial siege, wasn't it? I'll go no, check. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember this. Yeah, they're like they, yeah. I don't think they were like any kind of. Yeah, no, no, there, there weren't any diamonds. Yeah. There weren't any diamonds in that. I don't remember what they were, but I remember we did this already. I'm sorry. I mm -hmm. apologize. Uh, uh, pearls, a ring, sapphire. Yeah. I don't think it was anything fancy. I feel like uh, pearls are are. Oh no no no! Uh, this is from the hatchery. You guys found uh, Mundath's secret stash. No, this was before the hatchery. <laughs> I know what Ciel uh, was talking about, though. I remember it, and they. Yeah, they, it was from the, like the first session. I feel like they were mm -hmm. semi-precious things, like uh, like zircon zircon uh uh, like they weren't rubies or sapphires they were maybe hematite was one of them uh maybe malachite or jasper but it was that kind of rock when you're talking about cls i i but i remember it 
It was written in our inventory, so it must exist. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, um, is I that what know. you say? <laughs> uh, are you meaning? Re it's in. I think it might be. No, you guys didn't go down. You didn't deal with that, so it's not those. Well, I'm going through the module, and uh, there is no reference of gems of any kind in chapter one. <laughs> you gave us gems. <laughs> I, I, I swear to God, this. I remember it, but like, like totally not fussing. I'm, I, I can't produce it, so maybe we should share yeah. the hallucination. Well, when I give you guys stuff, I usually give you the gold value with it. Did you mark down the gold value? Yes, oh, uh, six hundred gold funny. per gem. Six hundred gold per gem. Yes. What? What the fuck? Or I think six no six hundred gold for all of them. Sorry. No, it was six hundred total. It was six hundred total. total. Sorry. I, thank you, but I'm I, I don't mean to yeah, it was total. I don't have this. <laughs> it's because only one of us could take it. All right. Because we can't all have six hundred gold worth of gems. From one reward. Yeah, no, that was already divided amongst the party. That's right. That's right. Was it already divided? Yeah. Okay. I mean, Rio, Rio has, has her. I'm, 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 if it was from the first chapter, it's possible that this may have been loot from the kobolds. Oh, maybe. That, where they were that like looting the town and you handed them over to Night Hill. Yeah, That's exactly. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'll kill it. Okay. There it is. So, yeah. I just saw so, it in my so inventory Mark... randomly. So I was like, okay. Yep. So delete those for sure. Could you add his market down as specifically stolen goods? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, Ciela still has a, a cultist map, so she can totally wear that. Ooh. Yeah, join the cultist caravan. Um, if Terrence went to go get his mace silvered, could Shroud accompany them, or would that be a place to go to look at to see if there's like the possibility of getting like a magical weapon or having my shield enchanted? Um so to be clear, a plus one shield is a rare item. That is, is very hard to find. Okay. Um, and a very long time to enchant. Okay. Um, enchanting an item, even like a base common one, is a week worth of work. Okay. Yeah. So if you go around looking for enchanters and in the in the odd chance you'd be able to find somebody, it, it, you wouldn't be able to get it back in time before the ship left. Understood. Okay. Uh, and certainly nobody has them for sale, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Never mind. Uh, what about like spell scrolls? Spell scrolls. Good question. If you uh, uh, uh I'm gonna say again, as far as procuring magic items go, you you guys aren't gonna be able to achieve that in like half a day's time in a city that you haven't built, with the exception of you. Erevir, uh, haven't been before. Um, so you're not going to find magic items, unfortunately. But you've got some days in Baldur's Gate when you get there. You're going to be at least 10 days ahead. So between your uh, prepping for their arrival, uh, you can certainly go ahead and spend some time looking around for such things. Is there anything else? Uh, but you could get your weapon silvered, Shroud, if you wanted to. Yes, let's go with that. Okay. It's kind of like getting a magic weapon. Yeah, how, it's next to best um, That's You said it's 100 gold. Um, how do you update that in your inventory? I've never had that before. Uh, go to whatever weapon you have silvering. Uh -huh. when, it, when it goes out, hit the customize button and check off silvered. And that's how you track it. Interesting. Okay. I don't have that option in the app, which is lame, so I'll have to do that on my laptop. Got it. Okay. Is there anything else, folks? Anything at all? Sounds like a no. It's everything I can think of. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Um, you guys finish up your day. You make your way around El Terrell. Um, you've seen the sights you want to see. You've done the things you want to do. You've been, you know, sugar babied the way you wanted to be. 
and uh, now it's time to get some much needed rest before your voyage begins tomorrow to the famed city of Baldur's Gate, which apparently no one here has seen. Um, uh, which is probably pretty cool because I don't, if I'm really thinking about it, I don't think, I think there may be only like one or two of you that's actually seen a city of that scale before. I may have been um, there with uh, my past. Yep, exactly. Um, but anyway, the point is for the majority of the party, you know, you've been to El Terrell, which is an exceptional city, uh, shockingly so. But Baldur's Gate is a famous one. Um, with that, you settle in, you go to uh, uh, a pair of Black Antlers Tavern, um, and you all can pay. Uh, eight silver pieces uh, for stay for the day. Um, Erevir, you have your home within the city, so you're covered if you want to sleep there for the night. And, I yeah. Start, sorry, can I start making an acid with my alchemist tools? Um, You didn't have anything else you wanted to do today, right? So that is certainly possible. Uh, in fact, you can have a vial made by the end of the day if you wanted to. You would need to pay out, though, because it is 25 gold pieces, half the material price. Uh, we're going to call it 13 gold pieces. So mark off 13 gold pieces in raw materials, and you'll be able to produce an acid vial by the end of the day. Okay. Perfect. Yes, Ciela. And what about our little side adventure to the Thieves Guild? Yep, we're going to get you guys. Um, and in fact, because of the nature of secrecy of this, and because I want to uh, potentially protect the the background of this character from those who have not been privy to it, I'm going to ask Shroud, Aoife, uh, Erevir, and Terence to lead the call temporarily. Uh, I'll put a message in the Facebook window to be back. It shouldn't be longer than 5-10 minutes. Hopefully. 